Okay, live. Live. Ready? No. Oh, every time I get nervous. Oh! Okay, I mean, of course I'm ready. What are okay, we waiting three, for? Three, two, two, one. Oh, gotta breathe. Just... <laughs> Sorry, I get nervous too. Oh, wait, we're live now. Hi, everybody! Hi! All right, here we go. Another oh, live. Woo! Okay, so we're gonna post this here. Pin it to the top. Pin it to the top. Okay, Pin. cool. There we All are. All right, hi everybody. Amy Welcome. and Nicole. Woo! <laughs> are you your Amy? <laughs> Amy. And I'm Nicole. Nicole. Hi. hi. Welcome. So we're here. Okay, we're getting much better at there we this. Go. Just so you guys know, so that you'll know when to tune in, this is going to be Friday. So Friday. we at least... <laughs> at some time. At some time. <laughs> so, um, you know, in Angel's work, it's never done. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, today's been a day though. So Nicole came over and then we just were talking and talking and eating lunch and it's like, oh, the time has gone. So here we are. We're on and um, Fridays in the afternoon because I'm not a morning person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, also too, like I feel like, you know, people, um, you know, come on when it's time for them and they know when yeah, that time yeah, is. Totally. So, so yeah. here we are. So welcome. So today we're using two accounts. Last time we used three, but um, we figured that it'd be easier to take our other device and record for YouTube. So this will be available on YouTube after. Shift it into um, landscape mode. <laughs> so, so you can see both of us when we pop out a screen. And um, today we're going to take some questions and just see what comes up organically. We kind of already feel like we know what theme this is going to be, but we'll see mm -hmm. how it flows. And what do you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, it, um, we've had a lot of discussions of, you know, work and mediumship and angels and all of that fun stuff. So we want to hear from you. Um, I'll hear your comments, what you guys would like us to talk about. Do a little bit of chatting and then some readings. Um, I'm looking at the camera. So we're saying hi to Starlight Photo. So, so hi, hi everybody. <laughs> and then we're saying hi to Nicole Angel Medium. Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> and then we're going to say hi to YouTube up there. Woo! <laughs> all right. And so all of us working together. So maybe we should tell them who we are for the new people and what we do. Oh, yeah, yeah. A little bit about ourselves because we were on last Friday and we introduced ourselves, but today's a new day and new friends. So um, I'm Amy and I do past life hypnotherapy, regression work, and I'm a medium, a psychic, clairvoyant, and I also do um, energy healing work. So and teach classes and stuff like that. That's it in a little tiny nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say there's so there's much a more. Bit more, but <laughs> real quick. <laughs> And I'm Nicole, and I channel Archangel Metatron, but not um, uh, not limited to your guardian angels or loved ones that have crossed over too. So when we're channeling, uh, tons of psychic information comes through. Obviously, we get to work with your guides specifically and your guardian angels and your loved ones that have crossed over and really helping you to design and create the life that you wish to see here on earth. So many people think when you channel higher dimensional beings that they'll take away your free will and that's actually the opposite. Higher dimensional beings are here to help you along, never taking away your soul's mission or plan or what you've come here to do. So we're just gently guiding you along, they're saying. <laughs> Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I'm seeing some highs. So hello in India hello. and hello from around the world. So we're here in Texas right now. Um, okay, perfect question. Tips on channeling Archangels. <clears throat> so tips on channeling. Okay, so we talked a little bit about this last week is that your vessel has to be clear. So that means uh, eating high vibe food, um, having high, high intentions for your work. Uh, holding yourself at a higher caliber because remember if you're meeting these higher dimensional mm -hmm. beings not in hierarchy I mean in a higher frequency. dimension frequency yeah. yeah you yourself have to reach them in the middle um, so you have to elevate your uh, your vibration things that help you elevate your vibration uh, dancing singing laughing, laughing. creating <laughs> hanging out with friends um, you know, just being a good human being. And that's really, it's that right. simple. I really do think in preparing mm -hmm. yourself and creating a sacred space when it's time for you and the archangels to connect. That's really important. Um, sometimes people will just be going through their life and they're like, why are they not coming through? And I don't understand. And I often tell people carve out a time that's specifically for you and your archangel that you were channeling. And that will help 
uh, make the connection clear. Right. So we're talking about, because they're asking, what are you talking about? Um, we're talking about making a connection with archangels right now. That was the question. And I love everything Nicole said. So um, from the energetic standpoint, from the energy work that I do, I can clairvoyantly see the energy body. So the aura, the chakras, and whatever's going on there. And um, what I've discovered for myself and what I've seen with clients is that when they have their chakras aligned and balanced and clear, not clogged, mm -hmm. um, then they're flowing really beautifully. It helps us to make that connection. Also with our aura, if we don't have any external energies or junk or blocks and we can have a pure aura, then that helps us too because we are like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but we have to have that reception. And so there's the intention and then also keeping our energy clean in mm -hmm. mind, body, spirit, all of that. So the foods, the energy, um, our thoughts, our intentions, that all really helps. And there's some other questions. Yeah, coming there's through. a lot of questions on um, Starlight Photos about that. So Amy's going to scroll through her account and, and answer those right now. And also, I just want to say hi to everybody that just joined us. Amy and Nicole here. Obviously, I'm Nicole. This is Amy. <laughs> and um, we're taking your questions today about channeling, archangels specifically, or spirit guides. And um, Amy's going to answer some questions. Yeah, so I'm just looking at some questions. So really... Um, this one, I'll just touch on it briefly. How do you control or protect yourself from negative people? We talked about it last week. It's always going to, um, like we'll always be able to feel that. So the best way is to fill yourself with love, create a high vibe aura, send your energy out mm -hmm. so that there, whatever t toxicity or um, energy that's coming your way doesn't hit you so hard, it can be buffered. And then also you can call on the angels to help you dissolve any negative frequencies that are like interplaying between you and somebody else are coming your way. And I think that's probably <laughs> the simplest, easiest way of doing it and best piece of advice. Do you have anything to add? Um, <laughs> oh God, my kids dad literally says like, yeah, um, maybe cords. Cords, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and also too, like, how are you holding your space? Um, okay, because there's always going to be people on this earth that either give or take energy or what that feeling is. I know I'm trying to get centered without being on top of you. <laughs> and um, and that's just the way earth is. So w if we find fault with people, then you bring a cord, another cord into that. And you, you want to stay away from like finding fault with people with energy. Um, you know, giving or receiving. But anyway, with that being said, when you are consciously aware of your energy field, so that means getting up in the morning and really owning your space, owning your energetic boundary, even if you're in a toxic room or in a toxic relationship, it will not be able to drain you because you have claimed your field. You have, um, yeah, it's almost like <laughs> putting, <love> <laughs> putting a buffer around yourself, but I wouldn't say, I, it's not protection. It's almost like a, um, it's just strengthening, strengthening yourself. It. Yeah. 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 So meditating in the morning mm -hmm. and with this question specifically, you have a relationship because it's your children's dad. So there was intimacy there. So there were chords formed. So I would also say to you, um, in that specific instance, do a chord releasing ceremony or healing session to release any chords that are no longer supportive, um, anything where low vibes or frequencies are coming through, and um, that will help you. So what you're feeling is you're getting drained from him, and it's probably exactly what's happening mm -hmm. since there would be a cord there. So we're gonna take to Nicole. Do you have a question? I don't have any there? questions yet. So if you guys want okay, to post questions, see. you're more than welcome to on this account. Okay, so, so here Ash Patterson asks, does the same apply to connecting and channeling with your spirit guides? And was that a scary experience for you when you first made these connections? Oh, I love this question. Okay, so good. <laughs> um, do you want to talk or do you want me to Oh, go no, first? no, no. You go thinking? first. I'm just looking at everybody's comments. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, for me, so when I made a connection with my spirit guides, um, it was really interesting because what I've found now looking back is that they've always been talking to me. Like I've had a connection my whole life, but maybe it wasn't as strong or as conscious. So when I went into meditation and connected in and asked questions and got specific answers, my process in doing that, because I wanted to be discerning and keep my space clean, make sure I knew who I was talking to, I first connected in with the archangels and asked them to protect my space. And there's that other word, protect, but I just wanted their frequency to come in mm -hmm. and like make the room bright. And anything that isn't of light, will be flushed out. And so I asked, it was Archangel Metatron actually, um, to come in, him and Michael, and just to 
like I got used to their frequency and holding my energy really high. And then after that, I connected in with my higher self. And then after that, the next step was I connected in with my guides. So it wasn't like it all didn't happen in one day, that process. I would meditate and get first used to the angels. And then for me personally, I wanted to get advice from my higher soul, myself. Um, and then from my guides. So that's how it worked for me. Was it a scary experience? No. For me, it was like all love. It was bliss. I felt peace. I was like that feeling, feeling at home. Mm -hmm. So if you're ever um, meditating or you get a message or something comes through that makes you scared or uncomfortable, like seriously, the probability that it's not an archangel or your guide is very, very high. So what do you think about that? Yeah, and they're not going to um, <clears throat> make you do anything unethical. So right. I also remember in the beginning that I was hearing like a lot of people talk about, oh, well, my guides don't like this person, or they do or they don't. So, and, and Metatron specifically too, because he kind of is, um, I would say he's like a, he's a scribe, obviously, but he's somebody that understands all truths and all realities, which all archangels do, but his job specifically is to really discern <clears throat> what's happening here on earth. And so it's not a judgment. Um, what I, what I, what I'm trying to say and what he's trying to say is that if it's coming from ego, it's not them. <laughs> That's like the simplest thing. Thank right. you for making that clear. <laughs> if it's coming, if there's an ego judgment about something or someone it's not it's them. not the archangels mm -mm. or the guides really yeah and i think some people get confused too because when our loved ones cross over depending on like what level they've crossed into um and where they are at a soul frequency basically um sometimes they'll lean on them as and give them too much how do you want to say it like too much control like they lean on them too much and thinking that they're an angel and they're enlightened but really there's like still human spirits so they have maybe their own thoughts on things like if you know if I connect in with my grandmother and I feel her vibration and I get her sense of humor and I know that it's her you know she's probably gonna talk to me more how she would if she were here on earth mm -hmm. and um, and then if she's like elevated a little bit then maybe with some more higher conscious awareness or knowledge but it's completely different than talking to an Archangel their information is so pure, there's no ego, there's no judgments, like, it's all in love, and, um, and usually, it's completely different. <laughs> and, and you'll get the whole picture. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, there the won't whole be like, oh, just from view. your side. No, no it's, the whole, it's the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. And that's really important, and was that a scary experience for you? No, it wasn't scary for me at all. Mm -mm. No, no. Okay, let's scroll down and see. Okay. Um, and I just want to say, uh, stay passionate, truth, wait, so oh, what is that, do you know who she is? No. Stay, pa uh -huh. <laughs> in your, stay passionate in your truth. Thank you very much. You, we are very company. I love you too. So thank you for being here. Um, seriously, thank you for coming on our angel chat. And if Yay. you guys have any questions, feel free to type it in and we're just <clears throat> helping pull back the veil, literally, on <laughs> Channeling all things angels, spirits, spirit guides, um, archangels. Yeah, so if you guys all have kinds of questions. So I like this one. So what do you do to rebalance after coming in contact with negative energy? For me, I have to go to yoga or do something physical. That's just um, who I am. But I guess if I'm not in a place that I can do that, I like cut cords and I energetically... Um, open up my hand chakras and start moving, literally ripping the energy yes. out of my field and giving it to Archangel Michael because I just need him to dispose of it. That's what <laughs> I do. Take this. Yeah. So for me too. Okay, so what do I do? Let me read it again. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'm just thinking like if I've had an altercation or I run into somebody or maybe I just did a clearing or whatever, um, I will just go through, it's like a meditation where I sit in meditation and I see the energy, and so I'll look and I'll literally see what's in my field, where it's at, how is it influencing me, is it connected, is it just hovering, you know, like what's going on, and then I clear a lot with uh, my mind, I'll watch it and move it and have the angels come in, but if it's super, like, really got to me, I do exactly what she does, where I just like, push it through and wash my hands just do like energetic bath where I'm pulling it off and clearing it away. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I will sometimes do if I don't have a lot of time and I'm just kind of in a funk is I'll do the crystal singing bowls. I talked about that last week because then it brings in the sound vibration and that just immediately will clear the field and start to reset everything. Yeah. But not everybody has that. So everybody can breathe. Everybody can connect in. Everybody can 
ask it be released. And one of the biggest things for me, um, one time when I felt a lot of energy coming my way, I was like, what is this? And I always wanted to know what was going on. I'm like, is this my crap from another lifetime? What's going on? Like, I just felt all this energy hit me. And so, but I found out it belonged to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But in that process, just by asking, what is this? Where was this coming from? Is this me? Is this yeah. belong to me? Then you can know because sometimes our own stuff comes up and then it's like we shouldn't try and kid ourselves that we don't have work to do or whatever. So so depending if it's coming from somebody else or if it's your own stuff that you need to heal and clear out, I think that's super, mm -hmm. super important. But um, all of it is just going in, for me, into meditation, connecting with angels, asking them to help me discern what is a path, like what exactly is happening so that I can address it in the best way for the situation. So. Yeah, and I find too sometimes like with loved ones or your like really close girlfriends or boyfriends or whomever, um, you'll pick up on their stuff. Like mm -hmm. I would pick, my girlfriend <laughs> Linda and I were opening up at the same time and it was like really challenging because we both kept reading each other and I was like, oh my God, girl, like get out of my head. It was like so intense, you know? I'd have to call her sometimes. I'm like, can you please just stop thinking about me? Cause I'm like, think, you know, and yeah. we would laugh at it. Um, now, it, you know, it's just, so when you're connected to somebody energetically so much, it's like you can be, I was picking up on her ancestral stuff. She was picking up on my stuff. It can get kind of It can get confusing. confusing. So you have yeah. to ask and just, mm -hmm. however you get, do you see it mostly or do you get the knowledge? Does it come back? <coughs> like, do you hear it or know it? I hear, yeah, it just really depends on what I'm dealing, like what it is. Mm -hmm. Cause I, I shied away from the third eye stuff for a while because your, your imagination can run wild, you know? And I was, um, at a, at just a little side note, I was at a past life regression uh, class and I, the instructor just, it didn't really sit well, so that's another thing. If it's not sitting well in your yeah, field. Yeah, if you felt something's off. Yeah. yeah. And, and I understand yeah. what he was doing. He was opening up people's imaginations and he's just like, let your imagination go. And then I realized that everybody was like a king or a queen or, you know, there was no like <laughs> slaves or people that were beaten with a stick. It was like everybody had these high royalty positions. And I'm like, okay, so. <laughs> so, yeah. guess what? In a past life, you've had all of it, you know? And like, let's talk about some of the stuff some that needs stuff to, heal. to be healed. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I, I shied That's away funny. from that. Yeah. I know, it's like, um, everybody was King George or something, and I, or King Arthur, and I was like, so, right. let me just say, like, in real regression work, <laughs> that is normally not the case, yeah. so, and we really have to be cautious as a regressionist, and I don't know if he was a hypnotherapist or just leading a, like it, a, it was more, yeah, like, like a guided guide. meditation mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. but you just have to be very careful that you don't, um, say things in a certain way that would, you know, taint the the experience, I guess, yeah. and lead them down a certain path. You have to be very neutral with it. So we just ask a lot of questions rather than acting as if we know. But he was doing, it sounds like, a visualization. Visualization and, and walking thing. around with mm -hmm. it and walking around with the energy and then just like, you know, people who... Uh, maybe their ego had come in a little bit. So that's what the archangels are discerning is like, you know, you have to do shadow work. You yeah. really have to put your ego in yeah. the balance and let yourself see all realities. All realities, yeah, right. you know? So um, we went off on a little tangent. We did, but go, it's off. Just, <laughs> we did go off. It's okay. And also I just want to add, like, when you do a past life regression, there's no judgment at all. I mean, mm -hmm. the reason you're going into these is to get clarity so you can heal it and leave it in the past and move forward and just release that energy that's come with you and creating blocks in your life now. So, um, let's see. Okay, we're scrolling through comments. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Wow, Can so we go on um, here? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, everyone on my channel. Hi. Hi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, how to protect myself against evil energy. So, that's kind of like what we were just talking about. Protect yes. yourself. I don't, you know, I know that protections and everything are, are really strong uh, but since we're we're going in the vein of archangels we're just going to say uh, amping up your light your own mm -hmm. individual light and your own frequency is the best protection they have told me because literally if you're in a different dimension none of that shit can touch you yeah. stuff sorry <laughs> none of it can touch you just raise and, above, yeah like that like raise your above, vibe <laughs> and it can't it can't it, meet you there if you're up higher it can't it can't get to you mm -mm. so the same question over here is that sometimes when you meditate you've seen something that doesn't look too pleasant an odd or scary face so you're gonna have to discern what that is is that energy from your past 
Is it something actively happening in your life? Is it metaphoric? Or is it really truly another entity or being? And my best advice whenever that happens mm -hmm. is I ask the angels. I say, come in and clear away anything that does not belong to me. And you'll also have this inner like knowing and gut instinct is, you know, what is that and does it belong here? So, um, so I do a lot of work and um, when I tune in for a client, the first thing I do, which I do most of my work by phone or Skype, and so I just look at their energy clairvoyantly and I do a quick scan and immediately anything that isn't supposed to be in there, the first thing I'll see is if there's an um, entity around them and mm -hmm. we clear that away because otherwise you can't get a clean reading no, if there's like mm -hmm. confusion and disruptions in the field and who is this being and some people um, have stuff going on. I, won't, I was going to go somewhere. I'm not. But anyways, I have stuff going on that needs to be cleared away before we can get there. But the best thing is to hold your light high, keep your vibe high, connect in with the angels, call the angels, ask for their presence because they're not going to invade our free will. So we need to ask and the more we work with them, it becomes like this really strong friendship and connection. Um, how do you experience that when you first started working did you find you were calling on him a lot? Yeah, I mean, I worked with Michael and Metatron. Like, I would put myself in a trance, like, mm -hmm. all the time because I opened up in Philadelphia and there's a lot of historical figures around there and there's oh, a yeah. lot of bloodshed that happened yeah. in that area. So it was constantly removing um, spirits that wanted to attach themselves to me or attach themselves to a home. Um, so for me, it was just really working with Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron, like, 1000% and not wavering from that and they would just come in I've had Michael um, pull things off of me in meditation or while I was sleeping or you know they're just they're the ground crew of this dimension they really have just been um, amazing guardians you know to so I, I just that's just what I do <laughs> you know? and and um does that make sense yeah it does and okay. we, all, we all have our own like unfolding and awakening process and how wherever we are whatever needs we have how they're going to meet us and how it will all occur so. yeah well and i also i was working with a lot of people in the mental health it, industry <coughs> here i go coughing again <laughs> they're, wanting to come they're wanting to come through and so what happened was we are finding out that people's org field were shredded and so that's where entities like to hang out yes <laughs> and when people are doing drugs or drinking really hard, like alcoholically, like not having a glass of wine, but like on the daily um, having a yeah, issue, like like, like yeah. yeah. So there there will be there's these like spirits that want to hang out and disrupt the field because they just I, I remember in a bar I was at a bar I was doing a reading at a bar and I went up and <laughs> I was a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that like you know what's going on. I mean that's a lot. Okay. <laughs> I, as I was going up into the angels, which is always even funnier because you have to like pass everyone kind of to go up. Then I was just seeing everybody like these spirits like smoking cigarettes, like with everyone, with everyone oh, yeah. hanging yeah, out, totally. like waiting, you know, till people were really getting it in <laughs> to come and disturb their field. Yeah. So we were just talking about this earlier. Like, there's nothing wrong with wanting to have a drink or you know, um, but just doing it responsibly. Like when you start getting into really defaming your character and really wanting to get off of earth through drugs and alcohol that that's when it becomes an issue yeah it's like if it becomes an addiction that you can't stop and a lot of times we'll see that i have clients that have addictions and um come to find out it's really not even their their addiction or desire mm -hmm. but because they like in a bar let's say they open up whenever you do um, any form of any substance that alters your mind or your energy can alter your aura and your chakras. So um, any drug, whether it's a prescription or recreational and um, any plant-based, you know, so anything. And then also alcohol will open up your energy field. That's why you feel so high. Mm -hmm. That's why you feel so yay, you know, when we're, when we're experiencing that. But if you're in a space that's not really clean or you're not aware consciously of what's going on around you, then other beings who I, I call um, departed loved ones or um, 
earthbound souls that haven't crossed into the light, so ghosts, I guess, mm -hmm. that are hanging around. Let's say they're not ready because they they loved to smoke. They still are addicted to it. Yes. So then you're smoking, they'll come into your field. And it can be anything. It can be alcohol. It can be drugs. It can be food. It can be sex. It can sex be is anything. a big one. That's another one where yeah. I see it. So yeah. I'm just going to get a little personal. <laughs> <laughs> so the same thing when your energy field's opening up during that act, there's different levels and vibrations. And I have seen beings trying to like... Come Come in. Come in. And yeah. I'm like, hell no. Get back <laughs> up. I see you. But they want to get it on the ride, man. Because yeah, that's yeah. like a good energy flow. They want to come in and yeah. experience it. Yeah. So, um, so like with these people, clients that have addictions, you know, it's, it's like they've been trying for years. So if we can release the entity in their field, it really creates a huge healing for them. Huge. Because it was never their desire. Yes. It was this other being's desire. And they kept thinking that the thoughts belonged to them or the urge was their own. Mm -hmm. And then you keep feeding it and it's a cycle. So. And it's never satiated. So. Yeah. Like I um I, I look in a lot of the AA groups and NA groups and what I see what they're doing it's like a great exorcism because once they person comes into their own field and realizes who they are without the drugs and the drinking the spirit can't stay there right once they're identified yeah. it's like game over let's call the angels in and clear them out mm -hmm. but they will do um. You know, sometimes if they know that they're going to somebody, they'll try and hide. And yeah. they're like, I see you, dude. <laughs> You're oh my God. To be here. <laughs> One time I had this angel come in. Wait a minute, can I just say this? Yeah. One time, I might have told you this story. One time I had this angel come in, and it was like when I was very first channeling, and I was working with my friend. Um, Oh my God, I forget her name. I can see her. She's a she is a friend. It's just I'm kind of half in right now. And I could see uh, she was massaging... Oh, Josie. She was mas I was massaging her. And, and, or she was massaging me. She was a massage therapist. And as I was going, like losing, you know, uh, the the uh, cognitive mind, right? Cause I'm going like somewhere. I could see this angel come in and he had like a trench coat on and he was just like, with wings, it looked like a little cartoon character, okay. like trench coat and wings, and he's just like, I'm an angel. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> you're a spirit, no. like Halloween, dressed up as an angel, which today is the 13th. That's oh, why. Yeah. <laughs> which Friday, is, the 13th. Friday the 13th. So. <laughs> so we're talking about spirits, but um, yeah, it's just really funny. So if anything needs to announce <laughs> that it's an angel or a spirit, it's not. It's not. It's not That's no. really clear. That's funny. Yeah, I've had yeah. like other funny story kind of like that too. Let's see. Um, well, let's see what questions we have. What kind of work do you guys do? Okay, so everybody popping in. So hi, I'm hi. Amy. My background is in nursing. So I'm a nurse and I also do complementary medicine, which deals with the mind, body, soul, spirit. So I do energy healing work with crystal, light, sound, channeled energy, the archangels, and I do readings. I can clairvoyantly, clairaudiently, claircognizantly connect in to guides and archangels and departed loved ones for readings. And then I also do past life regression work as a certified hypnotherapist through the Newton Institute. So that's my deal. And this is Nicole. <laughs> my God, I was like, I need to like get something. <laughs> Like, you know, oh my god, that's no. so Nicole's good. Nicole's amazing. Yeah. I, like, your work is beyond. Thank you. Beyond. I know. I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I, I stopped, I stopped going, um, to school, because I was in spirit school. That's yes. what kind of happened, was, yeah. like, during college, everybody came in, in the spirit realm, and that's all I wanted to do. I didn't know that they, you know, so... No. Maybe you could teach me. But maybe you're yeah. actually. Maybe we'll trade because she's yes. gonna teach me, and she's got a really awesome gift. And yeah, yeah. I channel yeah. Archangel Metatron, but I'm a physical medium. So when spirit or the angels come through me, it's physical. So that's why I move around a lot. I'll go in the trance. I'll do. That's all why kinds she of was stuff. coughing. Yes. She's like, I'm not doing that right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not going we there. We're here. <laughs> So, um, so that's what we do. So she's awesome, and um, you do events, and... Oh, yes, I do do events. <laughs> I do events. We're doing a psychic fair this um, Sunday in Dallas, so uh, if you're in Texas... And at I'm the Omni. At the Omni Hotel, mm -hmm. and um, we're trying to get Amy back on the circuit, yeah, too. Yeah, I think I so. might. It's been a minute, so just yeah. finally getting settled in this new location, so, so stepping out to... 
yeah. publicly meet in person. In person, yeah. like San Antonio, Dallas, Austin. I feel like that would be a nice little circuit. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So can we answer some of these? Because I kind of yeah. neglecting yeah, yeah. my channel here. So how do you? Hi, hi, Brooke. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, how do we determine our gifts and which one should we pursue? Even Can you that. determine that? Because Amy has a plethora of gifts. So how did you know which so ones to... So for me, it was just whatever came through first. And then what I was most interested in, that's how it worked for me. For me, it was um, being empathic. So I could feel what was going on in somebody else by how my body sensed it in my own experience. So I would center, balance, and clear myself before a session. And then if I started working with somebody, I'd feel something like a pressure or tight or uncomfortable then I would know where to go on them. Mm. And then after that, I would be, I was doing energy work and I was dropping into people's past lives and literally I could feel all the energy shift and I could start seeing the life like a hologram happen. So then it was like the clairvoyant gift yeah. came through. <laughs> yeah. So they kind of build upon each other, but I think the best thing is to trust the process and really allow yourself to go there and try it. and. Um, any self, like there's a difference between discernment, which I think is so important, but self-doubt, like encourage yourself. And um, even if you have a friend that can check your mm -hmm. work, you know, I've done that a lot with other mediums, like, hey, I'm getting this, can you, or actually, I'm, I would say, hey, I asked this, can you ask? And then I'd compare their answer with my answer, and that always helped. So there's, there's techniques and exercises you can do to help you feel more confident and comfortable, mm -hmm. but I would start with whatever you're drawn to, whatever's already happening for you, and build on that, and then the others will follow. Yeah, yeah. How did it work for you? <laughs> oh my God, for me, it was such like a crash, oh man. Yeah, you had a crash course. Yeah, yeah. I did a little bit. Um, For me, like, I... I crossed through the veil because I was just in my childhood was very um, I, I was a little bit of a rebel we'll just say that and so I kept going back and forth to the through the veil and so uh, I was curious and like a curious little kid you know I kept um, meditating and doing yoga and things were just coming to me real easily I would spend hours in meditation hours in yoga um, that's all I ever wanted to do and then so and, Spirit just kept coming in stronger and stronger and stronger. And then they were just leading me to um, different classes. And it wasn't like classes, mm -hmm. but it was like people. Like Do you little workshops. Like, yes. Or, yeah, and then, and then the same thing that Amy said, then you compare notes. You're like, okay, well, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm getting. Yeah. And literally, it's just like sitting down and like riding a bike. And like the thing, like whatever your gift is, like that's going to come forward. It'll Real, start. It'll start strong. coming. Strong. Yeah. But you, you have to do it. it. Like yeah. you have to put intention behind. You have to... You have to practice. You have to do the work. So the um, internal work, which yes, we talk a lot about, because yes. if you really want to become a good medium, channel, psychic, healer, the internal work is the key. That's what will either um, push you forward or hold you back. Yes, totally, <laughs> totally. I'm just seeing this comment from yes, Stay please. Passionate Your Truth. Um, we're behind on comments a little bit. Spirit smoking in our bar. Ha ha ha. That makes me feel happy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people are still people. Like, you know, we have our, ple our pleasures on the other side. On the too. other side. But I will say, like, some people get trapped because they don't want to give up their pleasures so they don't fully ascend. And um, so I guess this is a segue into my book. Oh, into your book. Talk. Okay. Yes. So this is a book that I wrote with my friend Connie Parker. And um, this is based on four past life regressions that turned into channeled messages from our Starseed Council and the Archangels. And it was talking about how people can get trapped and actually how it's created like this heaviness energy on earth. Mm -hmm. So if we're trying to ascend and we're looking out and we're seeing all these spirits still hanging around that haven't gone, gotten lighter in their energy and gotten higher and cleared, it's yeah. creating a little issue. But um, That's what I always tell people, like a poltergeist is really just this energy that's still on earth that hasn't really, it's just a, it's like a, um, it's an intense energy that hasn't been worked out yet, and that's why oh, they're still here that. hanging out, and it can cause disturbances in the field. Yeah, there's all different kinds of energy. Mm -hmm. There's soul energy, there's ET energy, there's I, like we were talking yeah. about like, it's like artificial intelligence, but in the ether energy, there's um, plant energy, animal, I mean, we, we could talk on. forever the stuff that you see. 
So, so let's talk about your book. So did okay. you teach people how did it, um, what did you guys do? Did you go through spirit removal or any of that stuff? Or? Um, this is just, this book is about our awakening process and I already knew I was a star seed, but then I was getting in really deeper asking questions like, well, when people wake up, what are they supposed to do if they're a star seed? And um, a star seed is somebody who is from another planet, essentially. Like their soul has experience outside of Earth, and then we incarnate onto Earth for specific reasons at specific periods of time. Um, and so this, I mean, this is like a big. It's a big book, book. yeah. And yeah. Amy just gifted me one today, and I'm really Yay. excited because I already have her <laughs> second one, which was um, activating the star seed. Activating the star seed. Activating yeah. the star seed. And this is messages from the councils, and it's you available. Should go get it. <laughs> There's a link on my Instagram account or at starseededascensions.com or Amazon and Kindle. But um, the really good thing about these. Oh, sorry, did I cut you off? No, you you're good. Thought? Okay. No, you're good. So the good thing about Amy's book, and she didn't know this till today, and I told her that I've been traveling with it. So even if you don't have a lifestyle where you can read all the time, traveling with individuals who have amazing energy and they've created a product or a service offering, but specifically a product for me because I'm on the go so much, just having her book <laughs> like next to my bed made me feel comfortable. And it like yeah. really, you got the information. It was like an energetic it's download. It's like energy. Yeah. So this one, because you're talking about the other books and yeah. she just got this one, but this one, the back section, probably about like this much, is all pure um, transcripts from our conversations with our council of star beings and the archangels. And then the other book that I did is mostly channeled from Metatron and the councils and it's it's different, but they, they're high vibes. So just even having them with you, you can get, um, start to get like attunements from them and activations and awakening. But the, some of the like most mind blowing information that I got from them was about the souls that hang around and how they aren't crossing over. Oh yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, that makes sense. And that's all in there. And there's some stuff about like holding your vibration and keeping in the light to help for protection. I mean, there's, there's all, <laughs> there's all kinds of stuff in the book. So I'm interested to see what you think. Yes. <laughs> I will have a report next week. I will start reading this. And, um, what did I want to say? Oh, oh, with the haunted house shows and stuff, right? Like, I don't know if you do this. Like, I watch them because I'm like, okay, spirit, I know that you're in there, but is anybody going to release the spirit? It's like having a... It, like, makes me sad, It actually. does make me sad, too. I have a too. hard time with that. Like, it's like having a jailed spirit. Like, somebody who's literally stuck, and you're going to poke at it, make fun of yeah. it, and want it to talk to you. Like, I've done some crazy spirit removals. Not crazy bad. I mean, very intense, where... They're upset because they can't cross over, so you need a way yeah. shower, a medium, yeah. somebody who's psychically in tune that can help bring the light to the situation. So that's what creates haunted houses and, and people that will have um, oh, ailments, like how uh, Amy was saying, if the field's not clear, it will sometimes be a spirit or an entity that's attached to you, and they'll have the ailment, not you specifically. So mm -hmm. once you start to really see what's happening here, you can see a lot of the things on earth are not, um, it's not, it's, it's almost like it's, it's sensation, what is that word? Sensational. Sensationalized. Sensationalized. Yeah. Yeah, totally. When oh, you first started talking about haunted houses, I thought you were, cause it's almost Halloween. Oh, I thought you were talking gosh. about going to haunted houses. I'm like, oh, I don't go, man. I don't have that energy. I used to go when I was younger, but now that I'm more. It's oh, Friday the 13th though. It's like, woo. <laughs> So there, um, Amber yeah. Love says, hey, yeah. are you wearing a, an emerald? No, I'm wearing um, Appetite. How do you say Ooh. that? Ap I don't ap even ap know. It's A-P-A-T-I-T-E. Appetite? Appetite. A-P-A-T-I-T-E. Oh, okay. And um, a friend of mine makes these uh, Iron Horse, um, Iron Horse, Iron Heart Healing. She is amazing shaman, like real deal, like medicine woman, like, um, you it's know, from, really pretty. yeah, from, uh, the Sioux tribe and I can leave her link to, uh, in the story. She's really amazing. And so she blesses all of these and has them wrapped. And then a portion of the proceeds actually go back to her tribe, to the Sioux Indians. Um, mm -hmm. and she does refer to them as Indians, that. which I, I found very interesting because I was like, it should be native American or Indian. But so I just follow her lead in that because that's, that's her tribe. So. Yeah, that's so awesome. thanks for asking. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, gosh, Beth. I know, so we, many questions. Like, we didn't even know where this call was going to go. Can or this you video. answer? Yes, stay passionate in your truth because they. 
They're, they're on both. Oh, know. you're jumping back and forth, sweetie. Let's see, how can I elevate myself when in spaces of negative energy? Literally, sometimes you have to remove yourself if you're in a physical location where there's a lot of energy that's negative. But if you're saying negative energy and stuck energy or anger, yeah, if it's somebody mm. else, like set a boundary. So you need to keep boundaries in the physical as well as in the energetic. And if people aren't going to play nice and be nice, you need to like have enough compassion and respect for yourself to say we're done and step away. Um, if you feel like you're having a lot of energy that you picked up from that, then you would do a clearing. Um, salt water bath, going like exercising, mm -hmm. running, yoga, just like, working it out. Uh, meditation, call the angels in. You can do, if you work with crystals, you can do crystal release, um, which is a way to do it with a wand uh, and cut the energy out. I mean, there's a lot of different ways, but the fact, like, I just love that like you're asking. <laughs> so, hey, how do I raise my vibe when this happens? Because we're all human and shit happens I mean like stuff happens yeah so so um, there's tons and tons of ways but raising your vibe keeping your elevation high and just keeping boundaries and respect for yourself so if we keep getting brought down by people that are bringing drama and toxicity you know it's gonna deter us from our path and why we're here so and it may be time to say goodbye that's all yeah Okay, uh, so where can we get account, where can yeah. we get salt water? So you just get Epsom salt or um, Himalayan sea salt and just put it in the bath with you. I mean, where can we get that kind of salt that helps? Um, any kind of salt really, but the more coarse salt I find I like better. So um, any store sells salt, so it's just salt. Um, like even the grocery store. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where okay. you're at. So here in the states, Target, Ross, TJ Maxx will sell it. A Walmart, like grocery store, CVS, like any um, store sells it, and it's usually in the first aid aisle for the Epsom salt. Or help. Oh, me. in Texas. In Texas. Okay, Yay. yeah. AGB. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, anywhere. Yeah. Just ask for Epsom salt or Himalayan sea salt. Mm -hmm. You can go to um, even a Whole Foods or a holistic type of a grocery store, too. Um, let's see. If you have a question, people are asking for a mini readings, just put your question up and then if we're called for, for that one or if we see it, we'll, we'll answer. Yeah. So that's kind of how we're doing that. Okay, you've got some Yeah, here. I have some here too. Okay. Um, how do you clear these entities from coming closer to people or yourself? And what angel do you go to to clear an attachment? I actually do Raphael and Michael because typically it's it's something that needs to be healed or Michael and Metatron. Uh, Michael, Archangel Michael is um, for me just the one that will come in and rip things off of people. <laughs> like even more so than Metatron. Like I see Michael ripping it out and then Metatron healing the energy behind it is like a two step process. Same thing with Raphael is like Michael will uh, Michael, <laughs> right? No, I'm just remembering from earlier. Would rip that out, and then Raphael will come in and heal the heal the energy. And then, how do you clear these entities from coming closer to people? How do you clear these en entities from coming closer to people? So, first of all, I've been through this like all last year with entities and clearing them off of people, and you can clear them off of people till you're blue in the face. Until somebody actually accepts the healing or is conscious enough to have the healing, the entity or energy will continue to return. So it, it, that is called self-will. They're calling it the self-will project. Okay, so if you're, <laughs> you know, if you're working with somebody consciously, like if Amy and I were working with each other and I was like, Amy, can you just like grab this thing off of me and like get rid of it? Because I'm asking for it, my consciousness is accepting the healing and will also feel if it dips down that I need to bring it back up. But if you were constantly working on people or loved ones that are embodied all the time and they... They, and they may have a contract for that to go through that life experience. They may have, they may want it. And so what you're at a soul level, at a soul level, because mm -hmm. it brings them joy or attention or comfort. That's also what I found. A lot of victim uh, archetypes are being fed in that reality. So, so to clear them, I would say just clear yourself and those that are um, consciously asking for it. So how would you do that? Michael and Raphael or Michael and Metatron. Those are my guys. Yeah. I love it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, <laughs> that makes sense. And I think it depends on the type of entity that's around. So um, when I tune in with a client's energy, if I get immediately, which happens always at the beginning, it seems like, 
um, that there's something in the field. It's usually, if it's an earthbound, Jeremiel will come in too, Archangel Jeremiel, because wow. he helps do life reviews. So I always am concerned about, oh, this is a, a being, like I'm not just gonna send them away, you know? So, so, are they, so I always check, are they ready to cross over? They have free will choice. And if they are, Raphael, and I'm sorry, Jeremiel is there, he'll come in and help them through the life review process. Mm, mm -hmm. So, and people, there's reasons. Every spirit has a different reason why they haven't crossed into the light. If they're scared, sometimes we'll call their family to come through that have passed yeah. over to meet them, their guides, and help them. Because a lot of people get conditioned in fear about death. And so, um, gosh, man, this is this must be October. <laughs> it is October. <laughs> it must be Friday the 13th. It's Friday the 13th yeah. and we're talking about spirits. So, it's like yeah. I'm going to medium stuff here. But um, but if it's an ET or an entity that's not a human, then man, do those angels come in so fast and feel like furious? Oh, yeah, furious. they will come in. They'll light the room up so quick. It's just amazing. So um, so but you can call, work on the angels, and um, it does help if you can discern what's going on. But if you don't know, just call them in and ask them to release and clear it. If you keep running into somebody that keeps getting attachments over and over again. You just have to know when it's your time to just step back. Like you just send them blessings and step back because they're going through something. There might be something in their consciousness, in their energy that mm -hmm. keeps attracting it. And until they can take awareness of it and heal it, it, it will never be really resolved. So we just have to know our place, our boundaries. Um, I don't work on people without their permission. Um, mm -hmm. like it has to, That's you a know, big one. Like so, <laughs> oh my God, I can talk so, another hour about that. Yeah. So if you see something, you can call an angel and pray and then just let it be. Or if there's somebody you know, you can talk to them about it. But if they're not at the level, we, we talked earlier today about knowing people who, are, who just don't want to hear truth or aren't ready to step into a higher consciousness. You know, they're dealing with stuff still and that is their path. So we just have to honor and respect them for where they are. But it doesn't mean that we need to let any of that be detrimental to us. So that's when, hey, if you know, if this is the way you want to go, I just need to kind of separate my my space right now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> All kinds of info. Thank you. I'm like reading with my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> We're just reading. I know. Just, I love you guys so much. Thank you for coming on here. This is really awesome. Um, okay, I like this. Earth Child 888. Um, how do you know if you have an attachment or not? And what is the book called? So okay. let's introduce your book again. Um, yeah, the book is Messages. Well, it's from the Star Seated Ascension series. Messages from the Councils. And these are um, from my friend Connie and my Starseed Councils and the Archangels. And you can find it on Amazon. That's probably the But there's a way. link in your profile, right? Yeah, yeah. If, you, if you go to my Instagram page and click my profile, it takes you to my website. And then it'll be under Starseeded Ascensions or under the shop. And you'll, you'll find it in there, so, along with the other books. So How do you know if you have an attachment? Thank you. Um, oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? A lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know. Yeah. But one, so some of the signs of an attachment are you're constantly um, getting headaches or you're sick and there's not a medical explanation mm -hmm. for it. Then they're usually like attached to that organ or part of the body. If you're tired a lot, if you start having habits or addictions that like where did this come from? This was not me. If you don't recognize yourself, if you're having thoughts that aren't you, it's so important in this life to know who we are. That's why self-healing and self-love is just like extremely important. So when anything's amiss, then we can recognize it. So my first attachment um, that I'm aware of, <laughs> my experience, because it happens, it happens. It does happen. It happens. It totally and happens. there's no thing, there's like no shame in it. Like it's just part of like you get dirty, you clean it, you help somebody, just mm -hmm. kind of that thing. So I um, just one day was feeling really emotional. I didn't know what was going on. This was when I was training. I teach for a school called the IEL Institute. They're based in Austin. And it stands for Into with the Energy of Love. Mm -hmm. It's all classes in healing work and readings. And the next course at that time when it was developing was about um, spirit releasement. Mm -hmm. And I kept getting it. And there's a book by... Um, Dr. Baldwin about spirit releasement therapy and I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to go there. I'm so just loving, only staying in the positive, like only staying with the angels. Well, then my experience, so all this was going on. I was getting these messages, take this class, take this class. I'm like, okay. 
So prior to that class, I just felt one day all this emotion come over me and I went and I laid down and I couldn't even help it. I went into fetal position and I just like cried. And the sorrow was so deep and intense and it was just like this wailing like cry where I was like shaking. I'm like, what is this? I had no reason in my mind, in my life, like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I was confused. And I thought, is this past life energy? Like, I literally did not understand it. So I called Russell Forsyth. He's, um, like, my mentor, um, I guess, colleague. He's the founder of the IEL Institute in Austin. And I did a phone session with him. And he led me through this experience where I saw a being in my field. And I was like... And so he was so cool because he didn't tell me anything. He's just like, what are you seeing? Comparing it to what he saw. Yeah. Same thing. Okay. You know, not he didn't want to influence me. Like mm -hmm. we were talking about at the beginning, which I love that approach. Um, so for especially for somebody who can already, like I was already clairvoyant and could see things. And it's just, I hadn't even, I had not even ever thought to check or look. Because right. it was just not even my, in my awareness at that point. This was a few years ago. And so, um... So he's like, yeah, it's in the mom. She was a female. Um, her, she had two kids, a male and a female, like mine, children. Mm. She committed suicide because she couldn't handle it on life. Mm -hmm. And so she was hanging around me for healing and to see how it's done. Like, how did I handle all of these responsibilities of being a mom and working and having challenges? She felt like she hadn't fulfilled her um, like lesson, I guess, mm -hmm, in life. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so there was a lot of healing there. And at a soul level or at an energetic level, I was okay. And I wasn't consciously aware of this, but something in my energy was open enough to let her attach to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it got to the point where I started feeling all of her stuff. And then I was like, okay, it's time. <laughs> So we did a releasement and she then, Jeremy L came in and helped her with her life review mm -hmm. and helped her get the healing that she needs. So we're not like, wow. we're talking about energy in our field. Like it yeah. doesn't have to be anything toxic or an evil entity or dark. It can be another human soul looking for assistance and help. And so that's my story, <laughs> how I got introduced to it. And then I took the class, which you can take, um, it's online through the IEL Institute and, or in person. And it really brought about so much love and compassion and clarity in spirit releasement healing. So, wow. Yeah, I hadn't shared that with you before. No, <laughs> it was that's so pretty, intense. Yeah, it's like super intense. So, um, okay. Um, <laughs> I know, like, I'm like, doing that. that. <laughs> that's a really amazing detailed account. Thanks. And Thank so, you for sharing that. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Sophie. So, she said she had something very similar like that happen where emotion can come through. I mean, I mean to tell you, like, this whole world, <laughs> you know, you just learn so much. There's oh, a lot yeah. that can happen. And so we always have to ask and discern what's really going on here. So that was my story. <laughs> I don't know what to say after that. Okay, we'll take a question. <laughs> oh, yeah, Friday the 13th. Yeah, we're celebrating Friday the 13th. In a positive In way. In a positive way. Bringing light to anything yeah. that needs clarity. I forget. There's an old superstition how it got started, but I'm not going to um, go there. I'm sure it wasn't too nice. Okay, how do you know if you have... Oh, what we is a book called? We did that. Um, okay, have you ever worked with seraphims, and yeah. what are they exactly? You know, that's really amazing. You should have, I have not, actually. Actually, I know Amy has. I know um, some of my other friends have. So do you want to answer Yeah, that? there's nine choirs of angels. And so the seraphims are quite a bit higher than the archangels. They're very close to the Godhead, if you want to look at it that way. Um, I've only ever had to call them in minimally. They come in if you're dealing with extremely dark force entities that are not of this earth. They come in and just help heal that clearly because... Anything, you know, this should be like a school and a balanced playing field in some regards and sometimes the darkness just has infiltrated in certain areas. So it's like, hey, you know, this isn't a fair playing field. You don't yeah. belong here and they'll come in and release and clear that. Um, when that has happened, I, I don't engage. I just hold space and know that they're there. Let them do their work. Like, I don't want to see it. I don't want to connect in. I don't want any, like, I'm just like, okay, I'm holding space. Oh, the seraphim are here. And then I know, like, we're oh, dealing wow. with the next level of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they'll come in. So, um, but if you, like, if you're in meditation and you're ever drawn to a specific archangel, that means they're there, they're ready to work with you. And if it's the seraphim, that, that's, that's how it really happened cool. for me. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's 
see this, I'm gonna move that. Thank you for sharing. Any advice on how to cleanse energies transferred through sex with others? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Actually. Yeah. I really like that you just go there. <laughs> so. uh, we, were, we were talking about that earlier. Um, oh man, yoga for me <laughs> is how I do it. It's like squeezing out the body and twisting and turning it and livening up the auric field. Also in yoga, there's a lot of mantra for that. So I do that through chanting, chanting the seed sounds of God. The energy field, um, all every chakra has a seed sound. I chant that yeah, and I girl. clear it out <laughs> and I just keep going up and down until they're all uh, circulating the right way. Also, Reiki is really good. You can go in, grab the energy, you know, give it back to God, give it to the archangels. But I just have to say, there's a lot of like incestual, inset, wait, inset, how do I say that? Anyway, incest, incest <laughs> okay. happening with energies in the energy field and, um, you know, just like moving out of those, they're really molesting and prostitution energies. They're not healthy for anybody, um, you know, and, and. You're just talking about this. But yeah, they will piggyback and they will make your life crazy. Even if you think that you're in control, you will not be. Something else will be controlling you. And we've seen it in that big and bad, like next level shit that Amy's talking about. That's what attaches itself to you because there's a whole orchestration behind the veil. Light uh, dark. dark and light, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so if we were just talking about seraphim, so the seraphim can come in from what I'm understanding what you guys are saying are coming in and clearing that out because usually there's a there is a there's a there's something uh, getting uh, energy feeding off it of feeds. that. It feeds. That's yeah. what it does. It feeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's not to deny yourself sex. So if you're married or if you're in a conscious relationship and you're with somebody who you want to be with, yeah, sex is a really beautiful and powerful thing. The the energies that they look like serpents to me, where they intertwine when you're having a sexual experience, and it really is putting getting you right next to God like at that second like I feel God pulsing through me and my partner and we're in bliss and we're in what's called a consort like uh, you know in a lot of the um, deities that, that talk about that uh, different energies that serpent energy and and that's where life is brought in creation is brought in so it is also a very beautiful thing and I've seen and I've heard the angelic choirs as I'm having an orgasm <laughs> and that's really amazing. I've also had a lot of past lives like... <laughs> well, what it does when is I'm... it flushes energy through you. Oh my God. It clears you out. It yes. cleans you. And so if you've got past life shit ready, okay. Okay, it is. Right. Oh, well, I'm like getting distracted. There's yeah. like a movie playing. <laughs> oh, I've had that too. So. Okay. Yeah, you're not alone in that. It's like, what is going on here? So, um, salt baths, yoga, um, meditation, uh, Reiki, energy healing, crystals, anything you can throw at it. To anything like, to clear. Yeah. 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 And, um, and also like put yourself, be aware of who you're intimate with. <laughs> so if somebody has something hanging around them, whether it's an entity that's like a conscious energy or even just a vibration, you're becoming intimate with them. It's going to affect you. Mm -hmm. And if it is an entity, it can cross over into your field. People like an STD if you want, but in energy, like they can share shit back and forth, back and forth. So you want to be clean. You want to be completely You're very clean. clean. Yeah. So, I mean, it, there's a time and a place for it and it's awesome and it's, you know, natural and it's great, but yeah. just know what you're getting into. So if you feel off with anything after, then just, um, you're going to want to look into ways to clear your energy for sure. Yeah, so. and just like I saw those um, spirits smoking cigarettes as I went up in frequency in the bar, they're there too when you're having sex. So yes. I've seen them as I'm raising my frequency with my partner. I can see those spirits hanging around just waiting to to feed. They so to this, jump in. Yeah, so that's how we know. <laughs> so, so, all right. Yeah, yeah this is another like conversation. <laughs> hey, just another day with Amy yeah. and Nicole. <laughs> So let's see. Oh, it says we have two minutes left on mine and yours too. Okay. Yeah. So we're coming to an end. So we're going to try and get on every Friday. We'll announce on our page yes. when the next time is. I got to check my schedule. Mm -hmm. We'll share this on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. So, totally. um, so get your questions for next week. And then also we're going to do like a mini book review maybe. Let's yay. do that. I'm excited. I read this. Okay. So and, um, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So the links are in our bios. So thank you everybody. And um, we're so glad y'all could stop by today.
So keep your questions ready for next time. She's saying, yay! I know, I'm watching. Yay. I'm like, what is she saying? <laughs> okay, yeah, angels have choirs. They do. Sound and vibration, quickest ways to clear anything. Yeah. It just goes in, woo! And we'll clear it totally out. Totally clears it. So. <laughs> so even if you don't like your singing voice, just get on in there. <laughs> toning. That's why like toning and mantras will help that way too. Mm -hmm. um, they have the Tibetan bowls, cymbals, chimes, gongs, the crystal bowls, any high vibrational music. Like I, in high school, used to listen to the, the what is it, Benedict of the Monks or something. There was oh, some yeah, TV, yeah, yeah. Or not TV, but some CD that I got on those CD milk. You know they had those clubs. Oh, I remember where you away yes. from CDs. And I loved it. And I don't even know the language, but the vibe was so high. So anything that makes you happy and high in vibration and it's pure, that will help to clear your field for sure. And not being in fear. So we're just telling yeah. you like this stuff that's there just so you have awareness of it and you are co-creating your reality with the divine. So enjoy it, love it, love those that are around you, have sex. Have fun, <laughs> but with people you would like to be, <laughs> you know, energetically yeah. courted to, because that's what's happening. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I and think having a good time. Yeah, it's just about awareness, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I always feel like if there's any fear around anything, just taking a class in it, finding awareness, and really tuning in with yourself. That's 